Hello and welcome to SFDC Sessions. Thank you for joining us. My name is Elisa Carroll and I'm Editor-in-Chief of Henry Magazine. First and foremost, we hope you're all staying safe this week. Amidst the devastation on the West Coast, we wanted to turn our minds and our hearts to the wilderness. So we're thrilled to be joined today by Emma J. Shipley, a young British designer whose work truly celebrates the natural world. Her fantastical collection of fabrics and wall coverings is enlivened by animals and chimeric creatures all rendered in vibrant saturated color and drawn from myth, legend, and her own far-flung travels. Today, Emma introduces us to Wildery, her new collection which will debut at Kravit in October and which features a motif called Frontier, drawn from her adventures in our own Northern California landscape. Thank you for joining us. And again, our many thanks to the Design Center and to Rhonda Harada for giving us this platform for education and for the exploration of the wide world of design. We should actually dive in there and talk about um, the vast influence of nature, obviously, on your work and how beautifully you dive into that. Um, would you mind sharing why that realm is such an inspiration for you? I have always loved nature and animals, um, just from a young age. I, I particularly love to travel to exotic locations. It's always been something that really draws me in the kind of otherworldly and exotic. Um, I think there's also this really fundamental human need for a connection with nature and especially in our modern lives where so many of us are so disconnected from nature and in particular wild animals. It's something that I feel quite strongly that we need to bring back in and that personally I just find huge inspiration in. Yes. And I love the fact that even in the, in the sort of nomenclature of your collection, you bring the otherworldly and the wild world together. And you have a mystical bedding collection, which is wonderful. Um, yes. Really beautiful. Um, I think I, I mean, I love all the natural world, but I think this kind of the myths and legends element to my designs and the fantasy uh, nature of them is something that I, th I think, again, it's like this fundamental human kind of thing that we've always been interested in. And if you look at the earliest human stories and even art and of course religion, it's something that always comes in this sort of supernatural and it, often it is um, supernatural stemming from nature or mixed with animals um, in these myths and legends and stories. Yes, absolutely. And you know, actually, there's this wonderful um, podcast I've been listening to that comes out of the University of Dublin archives. And the host was talking about the fact that, you know, on the surface, um, people will dismiss often the, the supernatural. But once you start to kind of scratch that a little bit, there is still there are still very deeply held beliefs, for example, around fairy culture in Ireland or wherever it might be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's so interesting that um, sort of every different community around the world has these supernatural stories and myths and legends that are really ingrained in their culture. Let's talk about that a little bit because you recently took an amazing research trip to South Africa um, and saw some incredible cave paintings that really came full circle to influence your collection. Would you share that story with us? Yes, so I, um, as I said, I do love to travel for inspiration and especially to get out of um, the kind of world that I'm used to and go somewhere that to me is exotic. So Africa certainly holds that draw and especially with being somewhere that still has uh, huge numbers of wild animals in their natural habitat. Um, so I applied to do a research trip uh, funded by Arts Council England and I got in touch with an archaeologist working out there who's one of the world leading experts on rock paintings. Um, and I went to go uh, stay at his sort of facility and went out into the wilderness um, up in the Western Cape of South Africa in the Cedarburg uh, wilderness area. Um, and he took me to the most incredible sites, some of which hadn't been visited for many years. 
None of them are marked on maps. These are ones that are really um, far off the tourist trail that are only known by these experts in the field. And they're kept that way to preserve them um, and so that people don't go and sort of um, want to take parts of them away, which happens or, or yeah, damage them in any way. So, I mean, on one day we went out, walked sort of four hours through the most dense bush and um, up in the mountains really quite high, um, but through in, in, you know, really, really thick wilderness and eventually came out into a clearing with a cave and up on the ceiling and the side of the cave, we were just surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of paintings. Um, some of them, they could be up to 10,000 years old and they're just you know that that feeling of connection to people from that long ago is just incredible and then seeing what they were depicting which was all the animals and the nature that was around them is so inspiring and again you just think that's what as humans we need and we have that incredible connection to is that nature that's all around us and especially for people in those times was such a huge part of how they lived um, and something I kind of want to bring back into people's lives through my designs. That's beautiful. And we certainly welcome that and need that. Um, and I wonder when you were on that trip, did you start drawing immediately? Did you take some time to process that? How did that work creatively? I definitely just love to try and experience everything in the moment as much as I can. And I do love photography for capturing things because you can do it so instantaneously and still be just taking it all in yourself without taking yourself away from the moment. Um, so I often will take lots of pictures. I might do some rough sketches. And then when I get back home, that's when I really start to uh, bring together all of my photography sketches and other research which might be into other um, stories like books that I've been reading or films that I've seen for example and then I bring together this kind of uh, disparate research to create something new so I'm never only looking at one source to create your own world in effect your own mythology and exactly yeah. exactly so you're always being inspired by but I've never you know, I would never sort of take that directly. It always gets entwined with other things and becomes this own sort of fantasy world of my creation. And may I ask you, you know, as an artist um, and someone who's shared that, you know, you um, render all of your your designs first in in illustration and drawing in pencil, correct? Yes, yes. How is, I would imagine it's important to you to preserve that quality of your illustration, the hand. How has that um, worked translating it into fabric? Yes, absolutely. So I, I've always loved um, the, the look of something that's completely hand drawn um, on a finished product. And that's something I've always wanted to ensure comes through. So working with Clark and Clark has been fantastic because they have given me complete creative freedom. So in terms of the colors, um, making sure that we preserve the line work of my pencil drawings exactly as they are. Those are things that we've been very um, careful of from the beginning. We do lots of sampling back and forth, testing of different materials to see what works best. Um, and we also use a combination of digital and more analog processes. So for example, the fabrics are digitally printed, which actually is uh, one of the best ways of picking up all of the fine detail in the drawings. With the wallpapers, we, we do a roller printing method, um, but the rollers themselves, each one prints a different color ink on the paper, but the rollers are digitally engraved in order to get, again, the really, really fine detail. So that's a really kind of nice mix between the um, hand craft and the, you know, the old process of wallpaper printing with modern technology to translate my designs in the most exceptional way. Isn't that beautiful how it enacts what you're doing, right? It's bringing together the ancient and the modern. It's really quite beautiful. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that too, your, your fantastic new collection um, for Clark and Clark called Wildery, which we're so excited will be available in San Francisco for the first time. So Yay. And it's debuting at Kravit. And I wondered, um, 
if you wouldn't mind talking us through the collection a little bit, the materials and the, the designs and colorways. Yes, um, so we have a beautiful cotton satin, which we did do in the first collection as well, and it was hugely popular. This one really has such a smooth finish. Um, it picks up all of the beautiful detail and the really bright colors from the designs. And it's, um, you know, a really good all-purpose fabric for drapery, for upholstery as well, and for cushions. Um, we are also introducing a new fabric base, which is a linen. Um, it's a really beautiful uh, base with a natural texture to it. So it just gives that slight kind of natural and rustic earthy feel, um, but still uh, replicates the, the designs beautifully. Which is very, We're, like, as you know, in the, pardon me, in the Bay Area, those earthy kind of where the land and the sea meet, those colors are very um, beloved. So that'll be great. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we also have a beautiful velvet, which is just so vibrant. It feels amazing. The colors are really jewel-like um, and brilliant. So that's a personal favorite of mine as well. Um, and then also new for Wildery, we've introduced 20 different colors of plain uh, textured silk, um, pure silk. And so those ones would be perfect for things like coordinating cushions, for curtains and I've designed them specifically to have colours that complement the printed designs. And then we also of course have the wallpapers. Um, all of the designs in fabric come in wallpaper and then we also have an additional one for wallpaper which is called Felis and that's sort of the most slightly toned down comparatively um, design in the collection and it's uh, a hand-drawn Jaguar print pattern. And again, that comes in some really beautiful colors that you can pair with lots of the different uh, more printed statement designs. So that would be a nice option for people to be able to mix and match either using with the fabrics in a space or could be with a statement wallpaper on, on another wall in the room. You know, and you've obviously spoken about, um, you know, the rollers and this, you know, this engraving and digital process and that you know, obviously craftsmanship figures very largely in your collection. Um, and you've also shared that the, I think it's a, in Northern or Middle England, the studio that you're working with is working yeah. towards zero waste and is really trying to be sustainable as well. Yes, yeah, so it's a really uh, historic factory in England. Um, it's incredible visiting. They have these wallpaper blocks that are hundreds of years old and it's still in the same premises and some of the printing they still do in the same way. They are very eco-conscious, which is fantastic. Um, they reuse all of the inks and they, yeah, they try and have as little waste as possible. They're working towards zero waste and they do try and all of their materials are recyclable, the papers and things, um, which is great. So it's, it's a fantastic place to work with. It's, it feels great to sort of have that craftsmanship behind the collection. And when you see the process of each color um, being printed onto the paper as the paper moves through the rollers. It really kind of appears like magic. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Um, each of the colors are mixed by eye by these very skilled and trained operators um, of the machinery. So it is an incredible process and I think it really shows in the finished product. It also means we can do things like the metallic inks, which um, I've really enjoyed working with and we've used them to pick up and highlight certain areas within some of the designs as well as using some metallic papers for backgrounds on, on, on other designs and it really um, you know some of them are more subtle than others but they all kind of pick up just a little those little extra touches that that make it feel like something special and give that little touch of magic when it's it's in the finished space it's really been inspiring to see the the many ways you found to kind of translate your personal vision to all kinds of artistic platforms and one of the ones you did recently was um, a fragrance collaboration with bahama london and i wondered how you went about distilling your visual storytelling into fragrance or descent Yes, well, um, so yeah, we've launched a collection of scented candles and diffusers in bone china vessels. They've all got little real gold details. Um, so we've really tried to make them pieces that 
you'll want to treasure forever and use them you know long after you've burned the candle or use the diffuser oil um, and for each design we've created a bespoke scent that I felt reflected the design which is quite hard to to figure out um, especially I'm a very visual person and so I love scents, but I, you know, in terms of knowing where to start, because it was in collaboration with these fragrance experts here in London, um, they were really fantastic. And from the beginning, I worked with their fragrance expert on the types of scents I felt, well, first of all, that I actually liked, because right. it's so important that, you know, you actually respond to them and you really enjoy the scents, um, but also that would, I felt would be sort of the right type of scent for each of the designs, the six designs in the collection. We also wanted to, you know, the designs do have this otherworldly exotic feel. So we wanted to make sure they, they had a certain strength and potency to them um, in the same way that the designs give you a certain statement. Um, but we also wanted to make them uh, have some slightly unexpected elements to them which the fragrance experts helped me with. So, um, you know, we've got certain uh, base notes and then you'll get something maybe slightly unexpected coming through um, in the top notes of the scents. So we wanted to create, you know, we wanted them to be complex and evocative of the design, but ultimately just really scents that you love, would love to have around your home and to enjoy. I love that you're always thinking in terms of, of deep time, right? Something that will endure, that people will have um, perhaps long after the candle has, has um, completed. So now people can have your drapery, your bedding, your fabric, your wallpapers, your fragrance. We can live in a full Emma J. Shipley environment. That's the plan, yeah. <laughs> I love everyone, but um, yeah, some people certainly do. So that's great, I love that. It's really fun to be able, I would imagine, to play with all those dimensions. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, last question. I just wondered, obviously not now, sadly, um, but have you had a chance to visit San Francisco or California? And if so, is there a pilgrimage yeah. you wanna make? Yeah. Oh well, yes, yeah. so I mean, I would love to come again. So I, um, I did mean to say actually, in the Wildery collection, I have a design called Frontier, and this was inspired by uh, a trip I took to San Francisco and then Yosemite National Park a couple of years ago, um, and then I was also watching a lot of kind of old westerns and looking at those type of uh, old advertising posters for westerns and that kind of thing. So all of those influences are in the frontier design and you'll see some little references to David Lynch's Twin Peaks as well. So I was sort of just traveling around California and get, getting all this, um, these cultural inspirations along the way that I was enjoying. Oh, how um, fantastic. Yeah. So in San Francisco, we've got our own, we've got our own motif. Yes, Absolutely. how lovely. Yeah, and I love San Francisco. I would love to come back again. So hopefully not too long. And then there's so much more I'd like to do and see over there because you have absolutely fantastic nature and wildlife. Well, we so look forward to when you can join us, obviously, and we can toast you in the collection in San Francisco. But meantime, thank you so much for taking the time out and for visiting from, from London. And it's been thank such a pleasure you. talking with you. Thank you, you too. It's been Thank brilliant. Thank you.